Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is November 8th and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. We got the Pacific Northwest to the upper right. Check out our low pressure system over the Pacific Ocean. This is going to track northbound as we go through the day today. Setting up a decent pressure gradient. We're going to get some east winds and this is going to move across to Washington, Oregon, Cascade. It's going to get gusty for some locations. I'll show you the latest on that. Then we've got a system coming through later this weekend and a stronger one next week. Looks to be ramping up and we'll dive into the details on that as well so take a look at where we are this morning if i toggle back and forth you see this activity here up and down western oregon i-5 corridor down to the valleys all the way down into southwest oregon that is fog up the i-5 corridor out towards the coast and aberdeen as well olympia some patchy fog across some of western washington straight to juan de fuca and also for some of the valleys in northeast washington and you can see all the way up into british columbia as well idaho panhandle and western montana so do slow down if you run into some of that activity and as you see the high clouds moving across the region it, it makes it more difficult to see what is going on underneath that so nice that we got a break there because we can't see where the fog is this morning now, also a reminder, the tides are still elevated here over the next few days, but we are going to be bringing those down as we go on in through this upcoming week. You can see the lofty heights of some of these king tides as we went through this weekend. Now, the maximum individual wave height, we're kind of lowering things as we go. Uh, you know, still some elevated waves out there. You just kind of pay attention if you're out on the beach. But, you know, as we go through next week, you start to bring some more wave action towards the coastline, but a lot of that energy might be driving down towards California. Then we throw, the, throw off through the extended forecast here and you can see we do start to get that gulf of alaska churning again so who knows what's going to happen there you're looking 10 days out in the forecast but it is that time of year maybe some more big waves and some stormy weather will arrive as we go through the second half of november so we have dropped the coastal flood advisories and whatnot the surf advisories are down right now as well but portland is now talking about that dense fog out there you see that had the traffic cams up this morning as well so do slow down use your low beams if you run into some of that uh, Medford National Weather Service talking about the dense fog. Look at this Spokane, Washington talking about the fog and National Weather Service, Missoula. That's the result of this ridge and some precipitation that we've been getting over the last few days. And I checked uh, Boise and Pocatello and they didn't say anything, but they do have some uh, no, no dense fog advisors out there for them right now. So anyway, let's get on to what is coming up here because... If you can look out over the Pacific Ocean, you can see that next storm system. You can see kind of these multiple lows out here. And then we've got that kind of easterly component there. You see the higher pressure here across the interior portions versus lower pressure across western Washington, western Oregon. That's what's going to drive some of those gusty winds as we go through the day today. So we take a look and we see when is the next round of precipitation arrive? Well, it looks like it comes for portions of western BC as we're going through Sunday morning. It comes for Vancouver Island by the time you get to the late morning or afternoon hours. And it's weakening as it approaches western washington western oregon but it is bringing some precipitation especially across the north cascades but not a lot of snowfall or anything we with it a very weak system indeed and then we scroll off into the extended a little bit more and we go through next week you see a deeper low out there towards vancouver island and a more robust frontal system all the way from british columbia all the way down through southern california with a fairly deep trough right off our coastline here so we're going to be watching this system as well this is going to have a couple rounds of precipitation here for much of the pacific northwest also and that's where last night's european model run ends you see a little bit of snow teasing out for some of the higher terrain more on that here as we go through the video now looking at 100 meter wind speed so there's our low pressure system there's washington oregon so look closely and you'll see that east gradient as we go through the day today these are easterly winds you can kind of see them as pick up as we go through the day today and they get a bit flustery as we go through this afternoon and tonight probably peaking at some point late this evening and tonight and you see the system move into the southeast alaska western british columbia and then we finally turn the flow back onshore here as we go towards the early portion of next week and we continue off into the future there and it shows this next system ramping up as we go through next week. There's our low pressure center, deep trough off the west coast of North America. Multiple rounds of precipitation associated with that as we go through next week. So we're going to be breaking down those systems and getting into more detail here as we get a little bit closer to that over the next couple of days. But I do want to point out these gusty winds. You can clearly see the east winds ongoing here as we go through this morning. But they are going to be on the increase as we go through the late morning hours all the way through this afternoon and through this evening. Things get kind of exciting out there for some some select locations stevens pass gap stampede gap columbia river gorge and some of the other select areas there east winds all across washington oregon eastern washington eastern oregon could get blustery at times as well 
kind of a unique direction out there. So watch out for some blowing dust maybe across eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, some of the farmlands. And we keep those gusty winds with us through uh, Sunday morning. But by the time we get for Sunday afternoon, we start to relax them a bit. Although it is still a little bit blustery out of the east as we go through Sunday evening. And then we start to switch things up. You see the westerlies return through the Strait of Georgia, Strait of Juan de Fuca, and they come back out of the west across the Cascades. And that happens at some point there very early on Monday morning, that looks like right now. So if we look at accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts, again, if we scroll through tonight, I mean, you see some of these gusts up over 50, 55 miles per hour. So heads up, if you're going back off into the foothills and gorge is bringing some of those east winds all the way out across the Portland metro, some of these gusts well up into the 40 mile per hour range. And some of this gets out towards the coast also. So yeah, strong east winds coming up here as we go through this afternoon and tonight. Now, taking a look at a little bit of an extended forecast, there's that trough out over the Pacific Ocean. And there's Sunday night and Monday system, just the weakest of systems brushing us there. And then that deeper low, the deeper trough gets towards the coastline here as we go through next week. So you can kind of see that hanging out, a couple of rounds of precipitation. Another system rolls through as we go all the way through the you know, seven, eight, nine day, 10 day time period. And then this ridge wants to build here on the extended forecast, deep trough out here over and north of the Hawaiian Islands out over the Pacific Ocean. But again, this is way out there. Fantasy forecast. I wouldn't put too much stock into that just yet. It's probably going to be changing back and forth. And looking at 24-hour total snow. So the next chance of any kind of really uh, significant snow, probably as we go towards next week and the end of next week and next week. You can see some of that piling up, but I mean, it's not a lot and it's not really getting to the lower passes with that one. And then as we go through, you know, the 200 plus hour time frame here, you don't want to get too caught up in those details, but it does show some snow potential for some areas as we go through the second half of November. But again, we'll be getting closer to that. We'll pay attention as we get closer to that over the next few days for sure. Six to 10 day above normal. This doesn't mean too much at this time of year though, but the six to 10 day precipitation outlook has us above normal here for the Pacific Northwest as we go through November 17th and the below normal signal there. Look at this three to four week temperature outlook, November 22nd through December 5th, below normal here across the region and still some above normal here with us as well. We'll see if there's anything to that. I plan on doing another El Nino slash uh, La Nina or Enso update here over the next couple of days as well. We'll take a look at the latest on some of the winter forecast also and we'll look at some of the long range models and that probably here I'll probably do that here at some point between now and early next week I do have to work the next few days Alaska Airlines but yeah check out the Patreon page if you like if you want a nice affordable home weather station click on the link down below to save 10% off can't beat it I've got two of these stations I test at my house and for the price you are not going to beat this weather station so I highly recommend it um, but yeah otherwise hope you guys are having a good day we'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then